What's going on guys? Thanks for stopping by. I hope everyone's having a great day. This is Josh here as always with Vault Hunters Union here in KSP Kerbal Space Program version 0 0.90 better than ever. I'm here to show you guys how to design, build, and fly an SSTO. And if you don't know what an SSTO is, it's a single stage orbit vehicle. It is launched as a space plane normally from the space plane hangar here at the runway and uh, flown into orbit on its own will. There's no assistance, no boosters, no separations or decouples or anything like that. It is flown as one solid object. I'm going to show you how to build one here. We're going to go into the space plane hangar and this is going to be designed as a plane as I said. So we're going to use an MK1 cockpit. I'm going to show you how to design and build a basic uh, a basic design that's going to pretty much get you into orbit. You might be able to use it to get to the moon if you want. Um, other than that, it's not very useful for anything other than practice. So this is going to be the, the heart of it. You're going to need a, a MK1 cockpit, a T400 fuel tank, and a turbojet engine. Make sure you use the turbojet and not the basic jet engine. The basic jet engine does not build speed very well and burns out way too quickly, whereas the turbojet engine is much more efficient in higher altitudes and much faster. So after that, make sure you have angle snap on. What we need to add now is some wings. So I like to add delta wings. You can kind of add whatever wings you want, but these are the ones I prefer. I find I get the best control. Make sure you have symmetry on there, which I did not. Um, just anywhere along the side here is good. After that, make sure you add your control surfaces. We're going to add the Elevon ones. You can add whatever ones you want. I like to add them on the outside, mainly for uh, cosmetic. What we need now is some fuel tanks. We're going to add some more uh, T200s now on the side. You're going to want them kind of near the back and as close to the center tank as possible near near the rear of the, uh, the jet. So you're going to want these in the middle just like that and now these are going to have the liquid fuel engines here and I use the Rocket Max 487S these are the ones I recommend as I find them very efficient but they have a very high thrust to weight ratio as well so they're perfect now what we need now is we need some intakes for that turbojet engine so what I use is a 2 to 1 ratio under aerodynamic we're going to use the ram air intakes you can add more intakes if you want but 2 to 1 for this is perfect it's all you really need then what we need to add is some fuel tanks or a fuel lines, I'm sorry. And we're going to actually add two. We're going to add one from the outside tanks going to the inside, and then one from the inside going to the outside. And the reason you're adding two lines here is so that when you first launch, you're only going to be using this middle engine and tank. You want it to be able to draw lines from, or draw fuel from the outer tanks. Once you get into a point where you're in space and you need to finish your orbital burn, you're going to only be using the outer tanks because the inner tank will not work in space, or the outer engine, sorry, will not work in space and you want those outer tanks to be able to draw fuel from the inside so it's a kind of a reversible thing that's pretty much it for the basic design um, after this what I like to do is add a few things I'll add a couple solar panels on near the front here um, this is just so that there is uh, some power if needed um, you can kind of put these wherever but like I said I like to put them kind of up near the front here that'll do whatever and then we just need to add our wheels so I'm gonna add two on the rear, one on the front, and that's a basic design. The other thing I will add too is I forgot to add is a del some delta wing deluxes on the upper, like I, um, I'll add them usually on an angle out here. You can also add them straight up if you want, but I find I get better control with this like that. And that is pretty much it. That's the basic SSTO design. Technically, the way I'm going to do this is just have two stages. Um, so it's not technically a single stage to orbit vehicle because there are two stages, but the second stage is just the other engines. You can do it through action groups, but I don't like to do that. Um, I just, I'm not very comfortable with it. So we're going to name this bad out SSTO whatever. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so that is pretty much it for this design. The next thing to do is to launch this thing and we'll see how it flies. Alright guys, we are on the runway here about to take off. I do this a little bit differently than other people. Other people would like to go straight up just to get through that up lower atmosphere as quickly as possible. For the simplicity purposes, we are just going to go ahead and aim right at about 90 degrees after takeoff here. And we're just going to camp out there till about six or 7,000 meters and then we're going to kind of slowly flatten ourselves out a little bit. The goal is ultimately to get through the upper atmosphere as quickly as possible to let those turbojet engines really work and you, the turbojet engine is very inefficient at these low altitudes once you get into the upper altitudes it is much better and the thing to realize too is that getting into an SSTO into orbit takes some time it's probably 10 or 15 minutes of flight time to get it in to the atmosphere you can see we're at uh, 7,000 meters we're going to flatten to about 25 to 30 degrees here it's not about getting there as quickly as possible it's about getting there 
period. So don't rush. If you're rushing, you're not going to do it. So we're at about 8,000 meters now. Gaining speed, you can see we're going to kind of maintain that until about 15,000, 14,000 meters. Then we're going to flatten out to around 10 degrees. And at this point, the goal is just to keep that horizontal line there on the orbital maneuver just above the horizon. That way you're still gaining altitude, but you're not gaining too quickly where you're not going to have time to build speed. We're at about 15,000 meters. If you need to adjust, you can. Um, just be careful because it is very easy to lose control at high altitudes. You should look up some videos on high altitude flying if you're not comfortable with it. You can see I'm trying to get that line just above the horizon so that I'm still gaining altitude. You don't want to lose it, but you don't want to be too high either. Like I said, you don't want to be gaining too much altitude too quick because then it takes away the time you're able to actually gain speed. So right about 16,000 meters, traveling about 850 meters per second. Very good. Orbital speed is around 2200, 23 or 2400 meters per second. So again, just a quick little clip here, just of me doing some adjustments here you may need to do. Um, this plane isn't overly maneuverable, it's not the most agile, but it's not too bad either. Some smaller designs would be obviously more agile. And uh, now you can see we're much higher, 22,000, almost 23,000 meters, 1,500 meters per second almost. This is where you have to really be careful with your maneuvers because it is very sensitive so I recommend instead of like holding it like I was doing in previous maneuvers just tap the button in the direction you want to go just to make sure you get there and you don't spin out of control it is very easy to do at these altitudes so you see you're still gaining speed very quick you can see now we're at pretty much at the peak 33,000 meters these engines are going to cut off soon you are going to see that the angle increases slowly over time that's fine because you do want to start building some altitude at this point and focus more on altitude we're going to switch from a surface to an orbit maneuver here very quickly and you're going to see that uh, we're going to be at about 2200 almost and then the main engine here is about to cut off so I quickly press space and switch to the liquid fuel engines and you can see now we're going to switch to the map you're still technically in the atmosphere we're about 30 40,000 meters or so um, so you want to basically set this to your apoapsis which is your highest point based on your current trajectory um, is a little bit higher than your goals because you are going to pass through the uh, some atmosphere and slow down a bit. So I compensate for that by going 10, 15, 20,000 meters more um, than you would like to, than when you ahead of where you want to end up. Uh, I kind of overcompensate on this video and I stop at about 140,000. You can see that we do slow down a little bit. So we're just going to wait now until we get into that uh, apoapsis so we can finish our burn. I'm not going to really explain how to do that. I figure if you're looking up SSTO videos, you are kind of an advanced user. I'm not going to do a maneuver node here for the same reason. You're pretty much get into a um, position here and just do your finish off your orbital burn. Yeah, and pretty much just throttle up at this point. At this point, it's pretty much straightforward. Um, you want to get that above 70,000. Obviously, OCD people like me will try to even this out as quickly as possible. And that's it. So we are now in an orbit with an SSTO. Some things you can do from here is if you want, you can continue and go to the moon. You can see we have plenty of fuel left. You can also deorbit and try to land back at the Kerbal Space Center. There's lots of things you can do. This should get you to the moon. Um, might even get you back from the moon. I think I've, I've landed on the moon. I don't know if I've gotten back with this configuration here. But this is basic. Other things you can do is, you know, use the new parts to get uh, cargo into space and stuff like that. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do from here. That's kind of up to you to learn. Again, it's not about getting into orbit as quickly as possible, especially in the beginning. Your goal should be just to get into orbit, practice that, master it, and then improve your technique, improve your speed, and improve your abilities. Other than that, guys, please like the video, please share, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. You guys have yourselves a wonderful day. Peace.